Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 15th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, of course, Patch Tuesday, the big topic today. And at first, it actually doesn't look all that bad if you're just looking at the numbers. We had a total of 49 vulnerabilities that were patched today, and eight of them are rated criticals. None of them were publicly disclosed before today, and none of them have been exploited in the wild so far. But of course, these last couple of days, uh, we had all these uh, pre-announcements, rumors about a critical vulnerability in the crypto API. And yes, this was one of the big patches that Microsoft released today. So the problem here is how the crypto API in Windows does validate elliptic curve certificates. So whenever a system receives a certificate, it has to check if the certificate is properly signed by a trusted certificate authority. And that sort of where things go wrong here, an attacker could create a certificate that appears to be validly signed by a trusted set of authority, but in fact isn't. So the end effect is that an attacker can essentially create arbitrary certificates that appear valid. Now, arbitrary as long as they're elliptic curve certificates. Elliptic curve certificates are still, I would say, less common than the older RSA certificates. They're a bit more modern, they're more efficient. And the world is certainly moving away from RSA somewhat towards the elliptic curve certificates. Probably the best way to illustrate the impact of this issue is to just go through some cases where certificates matter. And I put this a little bit in the diary, but just you're receiving an email from a vendor telling you about an update. Well, if the vendor did their job right, then they digitally signed this email. And of course, with this flaw, an attacker could potentially spoof the signature so they can send you a fake email that appears to be signed. Now, okay, uh, let's be truthful here. Not a lot of people actually digitally sign emails, but if you receive this email asking you to, for example, download an update, then the next thing you're hopefully checking is that uh, the website you're going to uses HTTPS and has a proper certificate. Well, again, that's where the crypto API kicks in to tell you that certificate is valid and an attacker could, for example, now spoof the vendor's website and make it appear like it has a valid certificate. That would require that the attacker has some form of man in the middle position here in order to actually redirect you to the attacker's website. Next, that's probably where the biggest problem comes in is if you're downloading this update from that website, again, when you're installing the software, typically Windows will warn you if it's not properly signed. In this case, even if you check the certificate, the digital code signature manually, it would tell you that it is digitally signed by the vendor that you trust. This is again a spot where with this vulnerability, an attacker could fake this signature. So we are using digital signatures and certificates all over the place to authenticate data, to ensure the integrity of the data, and that's really at risk here. Now, of course, the next big question is how difficult will it be to create one of those spoof certificates? I don't have a great answer for you yet, but uh, on Wednesday, so tomorrow or today, depending on when you listen to this uh, podcast, We'll have a webcast with Jake Williams, who spent today diving into the details of the, this vulnerability, trying to figure out what it's exactly all about. The only hint we have about the nature of the flaw so far uh, comes from the NSA. They originally found this vulnerability and reported it uh, to Microsoft. And well, uh, what it states in there, pretty good advisory, I highly recommend uh, that you should read it, is that uh, 
suspicious certificates as they are putting it will have non-standard elliptic curve parameters now in OpenSL, for example you can get a list of all the explicit defined curves pretty easily uh, and then you can check whether or not the certificate uses anything else uh, that's essentially what they're sort of recommending here and they're giving you some hints in how to do this with search detail on windows or OpenSL on linux so this is certainly something that you would like to patch. And now as far as other mitigation techniques go, let's say you do have a TLS intercepting proxy, then of course it's up to that proxy to validate the certificates. If that's not a Windows system, then you should be good. But again, remember this will affect not just Microsoft software. This will affect all software that uses the crypto API in Windows, which well, it's pretty much all software that does any kind of crypto. As an example, Google Chrome, for example, uses the vulnerable API function here. Uh, so um, Google Chrome is potentially vulnerable. Now, there was an interesting tweet and I retweeted too because I thought it was kind of funny that whether or not you are potentially vulnerable here when you're updating Windows because Windows, when it updates, it verifies code signatures and makes sure it connects to the right server. And again, a lot of uh, TLS and certificates involved here. That process actually is not vulnerable. And that's sort of another mitigation technique here because Microsoft takes advantage of certificate pinning. Typically, any certificate that's signed by a valid certificate authority is considered valid. Uh, but with certificate pinning, you're narrowing this down to either very specific certificates or at least very specific certificate authorities. And that sort of uh, limits the applicability of this flaw somewhat. But this only affects very specific uh, features, typically mobile apps, of course, which aren't really sort of in scope here for Windows, but processes like Windows Update do certificate pinning. Browsers no longer do any certificate pinning. That used to be a feature like a couple of years ago. It was sort of a big deal, but uh, was removed because it uh, didn't really scale well and apply well uh, to the web. The other thing to note here is that this only affects Windows 10 and Windows Server 16 and later, meaning Windows Server 2019. It does not affect older operating systems, which sort of gets me to the other topic today and just want to mention it briefly because I've talked about it before. This of course was the last update for Windows 7. Uh, so Windows 7 not affected by this particular flaw. Now the crypto API uh, goes back all the way to the early days of uh, Windows and the uh, crypt32.dll that's vulnerable here is present in older versions of Windows, but the library itself has evolved over the years. So the version of that library in Windows 10 is different from what you had in older versions of Windows. And that's why these older versions of Windows are not vulnerable, even though they do use this particular library. Now there are two more vulnerabilities I wanna draw your attention to, and that's two vulnerabilities in a Remote Desktop Gateway. Now, Remote Desktop Gateway is part of that Remote Desktop Protocol uh, feature that of course brought us BlueKeep. Now, Remote Desktop Gateway is often used uh, at your border uh, to authenticate users that are connecting to internal machines. And we do have two remote code ex execution vulnerabilities in Windows Remote Desktop Gateway. So this sounds like a blue keep type vulnerability. Haven't really seen a lot of talk about it given that everybody's focusing on the crypto API, but uh, definitely if you're using uh, this particular tool, patch it, also patch it quickly. So really two patches that you have to apply pretty much this week. And that's the crypto API one, as well as the Windows Remote Desktop Gateway patch. Well, and uh, sorry for running a little bit late today and really only talking about Microsoft patches, but this is it for today. Also, sorry for having some hiccup with publishing yesterday's podcast. Uh, 
the RSS feed didn't update correctly. So uh, if you are relying on a podcast application that reads the RSS feed, you may not have seen the podcast until sort of late on Tuesday. So for that, and don't forget, at noon Eastern, Wednesday, we'll have the special webcast with Jake Williams. You'll find links on the Internet Storm Center website. That's it. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.